Okay, so now we're going to be looking at that all important first message. So if you often struggle to think of the right thing to say, um, I'm again going to be giving you five kind of not so good things to do. And then I'm going to be giving you a few really clear examples of great messages that you can use in order to break the ice. Um, so first thing that we want to avoid is we really want to avoid sending a message out that I would consider to be too low investment. So those are the messages that are along the lines of, hey, how are you? Or hey, or hey, how's your night going? Now, have you ever noticed that the question, hey, how are you, is actually very difficult to answer? It's because it's very broad. So not only is that a difficult question to answer, but when we send a very short, not very thoughtful message to someone else, we don't really communicate that there's any specific reason that we have chosen to message them. It probably looks like we're just probably chatting to every single person vaguely in the right area, vaguely of the right age, that's, that could be attractive to us. And that doesn't communicate the right things about ourselves. We really always throughout the dating process want to communicate how we are selective and that when we choose to do something, it's because there's something about someone that we find particularly attractive. Now, the second little error, which is funny enough along the same lines as this, is actually sending out a message that's too high investment. So a too high investment message would, for instance, be a message which is very, very long, um, uh, sort of our mini autobiography, which um, at the end says something along the lines of um, fancy going for a coffee next week or let's get dinner next week. So I can understand that you might think by asking somebody out on the first message that you're just cutting to the chase and you have got into your mind, which is not a bad perspective, that you know what, you really want to focus on meeting people in real life, you don't want to waste your time, and so you want to get straight to that in-person meeting or that maybe that video day. However, the problem with this is, again, that because you haven't left space for that other person to invest and contribute to the interaction, because that hasn't quite happened, um, what that person is going to end up feeling like is they're going to feel like, oh, this person is just looking for a date and they're not looking for anything specifically from me. So that's why it's really important that we don't actually move forward and ask someone on a date on the first message. We really want asking someone on a date to be as a consequence of building that connection within the messages. It has to be a consequence of something that they've actually done. So step three in terms of things to avoid for that first message is to avoid never sending any first messages at all. So sometimes because we can have this um, belief that if someone is genuinely interested in us, that they're going to then make that effort to send us a message. Or maybe you think, well, it's, you know, it's not my job to make the first move. There, I just want to remind you that there could be so many reasons why someone may not have come across your profile. Maybe they're not logging in all that often at the moment, but they could in fact be an amazing match for you. There could also be people, be people that are genuinely just a little bit shy of making that first move because they're not sure that interest is going to be reciprocated. And that doesn't mean they're going to be shy in all areas of their life. So you can do a lot to cast your net wider and also just feel like, you are entering that mindset where you're really open to meeting people, you're really proactive by becoming more comfortable with initiating and sending that first message. So whilst I want you to be comfortable with sending that first message, I also don't want to go again too far in the other direction and be somebody who sends multiple first messages to the same person. This, this can often feel a little bit bombarding to someone who's receiving those messages. And whilst you might read a message and think, oh, maybe they haven't seen it or they read it, but they didn't respond, I'll just say something else. Before you go into that mindset where you're really trying to show and prove who you are and what you're about in order to capture their interest, remember, as I've said at least twice so far this session, we all need people who are equally as willing as us to build that online dating experience and to build that relationship. So if someone isn't being very responsive, whether that's because they didn't like your first message, didn't like your profile, or because they're just not that interested in dating right now, that immediately should filter them out as a potential for you because you are looking for someone who is interested and who is engaged with you. 
final kind of message that we want to avoid is we want to avoid anything that's a cut and paste. So whilst, again, maybe in the mists of time, it was funny to say, you know, you've won a special lottery prize, a date with me. Uh, this generally isn't going to go down very well. Anything that looks cut and paste and looks like you could have sent it to multiple different people, again, isn't going to really hit that mark of picking up on an individual detail. It's not going to be showing that there's a specific reason why you wanted to reach out to this particular person beyond their looks. So I've set the bar quite high here. I've said that there has to be a specific reason that you reach out to someone. So if you can't do any of that stuff, how do you write a really good first message? So the first thing to be aware, is, aware of is, of course, we want to reference specific details in people's profile, which is, of course, why we have to write our profiles and write them in a specific way, because it will really enable this profile and first message to work together. So when you are sending a first message, you could say something like giving a compliment like, hey, I like that you're into yoga. Now, to jazz that up a bit, we could create a bit of challenge here. And you could say, I like that you're into yoga, but could I twist your arm to try rock climbing? Or I like that you're into yoga, but could I challenge you to put on a pair of welly boots and hike with me this weekend? So what we want to do is we really want to then change how you're writing that first message so that it's part way a specific compliment where you're showing you've really noticed something about the other person's profile and also partly that you're creating a bit of challenge where we say oh could I convince you to do this or could I twist your arm and we want to make that challenge suitably playful so that we're dodging again that um, we're not being that high investment message mistake where it looks like we're asking somebody out for reals in that first message it should be relatively playful. So a few more good tips for good first messages. Now, when you write a first message, it can be a bit tempting to, again, ask someone sort of like a bit of a boring interview question like, oh, so where did you go to school? Or is that, have you lived here your whole life? Or um, I, I, it looks like you do this. So instead of going down that question route, instead, we want to flip that around and make a guess about what someone is interested in. So it could be that it says, looks like you're a born and bred East Londoner. Or it could be, I'm guessing from all the travel photos here, you have to be a travel blogger. No one gets to be that glamorous otherwise. You'll notice that by instead of asking a question, by making a guess about what someone is about or what they're interested in, and you can use phrases like, you seem, I bet. I could be wrong, but I'm kind of imagining um, that will tweak somebody's curiosity and, again, shows that very specific focus on them. Now, if you want to add to this a specific question, instead of tacking on the old, how's your day gone, uh, is there a way that we could jazz this up too? Is, can we make it a little bit more exciting? Now, a lot of this can actually come down simply to the words that we're using. So if we say, how's your day, again, we're sort of putting ourselves in that bracket of everybody else. Instead, if you say, what's made you smile today? Or what, what trouble have you got up to today? We get a little bit, it's a little bit more of an interesting way of expressing exactly the same thing. And it's that unique expression that will really make your message stand out in somebody's inbox. So finally, if you have been considering making a first move, but you're feeling a bit like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like people should make the first move on me. Um, so but perhaps you're thinking about what message can you send where you still give the other person a lot of space to lead the interaction. Um, a good way that you can do this is you could put a little cheeky message in, like saying, um, hey, Adam, this is me cheekily leaving the ball in your court. And then you could put a little... Uh, a winky face in there or a tennis ball emoji. Um, what's cool about that is we've still got that tone that I mentioned before earlier in our profile section. The, the tone of the message is really inviting, really playful and really fun. And so even though you've sort of like gone over to you, <laughs> you've at least you've initiated and made the effort and at least you've demonstrated a lot of approachability and playfulness, which is super attractive. So even if you're a little bit unsure about the sending your first message thing, you might want to experiment with some messages like that. 
So just to recap on how you can get much more effective um, first messages together, I want you to avoid the low investment messages there. Hey, how are you? Because we really want to showcase who you are. We also want to avoid asking somebody out for real in the first message. Um, and we also want to always remember to use a detail from somebody's profile in order to build that first message around them. We really want to show that there's a reason beyond what they look like, that why you have chosen to invest your valuable time and energy in contacting them. So I've just got a few questions that we've been sent in on this section. So I've got a question in front of me now that says, once I've got a conversation going, I often ask how long they've been on match. The problem is I've been on match for three years now. Could this be a major red flag slash turn off for women? So again, I think this is, there's kind of two answers to this. The first answer is that I would generally advise avoiding questions like, so how long have you been single for? How's dating going during coronavirus? How long have you been on match for? This, as you've noticed through your question, this sort of draws attention to someone's singleness. And whilst there is absolutely nothing wrong with being single, in fact, you know, being single could be amazingly empowering. It can show that you've got real standards for yourself. It can sometimes make people feel a bit like they have to explain themselves. So I would probably dodge that line of questioning. And if it comes up, if someone asks that to you, remember, being in a committed, amazing relationship isn't a race. And if it was, it would be a marathon. So it's OK for you to take your time and to have standards for who you choose to build that relationship with. So question two, how do you progress to, from chatting to an actual date? So a lot of the time when you are exchanging messages, you might find it difficult to judge exactly when is the right time to try and move things forward to suggesting meeting up. Now, we've already cleared up that we shouldn't do that on the first message. So when is the right time? Well, I can say when isn't the right time is when someone might feel like you're just trying to exchange a cursory number of messages with them before you've sort of exchanged enough messages that it's OK and acceptable to ask them out. We don't want that because, again, instead of you really selecting a person on how they've contributed to the interaction, it's almost like you've predetermined that they're a tick for you and you're just kind of working towards how you can convince them to go on a date. And that way of approaching things actually doesn't really work very well. Instead, it's much, much better to base suggesting meeting up or having a video date on a point in the interaction where you really connect. So it could be a good tell of when you've reached this milestone is where you'd be able to make a comment like, I like your cheeky sense of humor, or I like how direct you're being with me, or I'm really enjoying hearing about um, hearing these anecdotes from you. It's great to get your messages. So when you feel a bit of genuine warmth and like, oh, I'm enjoying chatting to this person and I'm really beginning to understand a bit how they're different and interesting as an individual, once you can genuinely say that, that provides a great springboard to then suggesting to meet up or have that date. So final question, I thought this was a really good one. Um, what's a constructive response to someone trying to make the conversation sexual before even meeting? So I'm glad you've born, drawn attention to the idea of having a constructive response because I think the trouble can be if a message is a little bit sexual or just too flirtatious for how you feel at that moment, it can be easy to just be like, no, this person is just after one thing and I'm not interested. And of course, there's going to be some circumstances where people might cross boundaries and that isn't cool. However, if you feel like someone's just being a bit too flirty for how you're feeling at the moment, we really want to give them an opportunity to understand how you feel about this and to take action to demonstrate that they've really heard that and they've understood. Because sometimes if someone is being a bit flirty, it doesn't necessarily mean they're just after one thing. They could actually be feeling a bit insecure, worry that you're just going to see them as a friend and really wanting to push the point of like, I'm really attracted to you. Uh, so if you can say something like, um, uh, or say blushes a bit too soon, exclamation mark, or can we rewind three messages back and start again there? It's again, it's a playful tone and a relatively friendly way of just being like, you know what, this doesn't really suit me right now. And you're not necessarily looking for someone who gets it right first time, but you are looking for someone who can take on board your boundaries as you express them 
and really respect them. So we've covered a lot in this first hour of this how to supercharge your online dating profile section. We've been talking about how to rebuild your profile so it's way more specific and much more individual. We've been sorting out what photos you're going to use. I've been encouraging you to get a tripod or a friend and get some more photos this weekend. And we've also been looking at what are some really good first messages to send in order for you to break the ice.